Well, here we are once again, Barry and Joe. You're tuned in to Night Sounds. And who is it tonight? It's Haley. Haley Kane from Haley and the Crushers. I I have a question right off the bat. Mm -hmm. Just right off the bat. Are you a fan of dance hall crashers? (laughs) I never got into them. (laughs) Oh, you didn't? Oh, man. Points if you know who they are. You do know who they are, right? Is it Ska? Yeah. I guess so, yeah. Oh, I missed it. I missed it. I missed Ska. She wasn't in the third wave, Joe. I know, but, you got, but but see, well, they they you just you share a vibe, you know. That's all. That's all I'm saying. You share I a vibe. It. I appreciate that. So you're on to well, you're kind of on tour right now. You have a new album out. You have a new song out. It's a cover from an Iggy Pop classic with a lot of drums. <laughs> and you have your Don't specific. Don't ever let Barry play drums for you. I'm just telling you, he's going to be all Great. over the place. But you have a specific uh, angle that you took with this song. Now, yeah. tell us about the whole thing behind. T- give tell us the story. Well, it's weird you mentioned the drums because it is kind of like when we were when we were recording it, we're like this is sort of like a swing song, like to reference the '90s and the swing era because that's the original swing era, right? But um, like <laughs> like it's like a swing beat, and then Iggy's just like f- totally flat intoning, just complete deadpan, which is so <laughs> awesome. And we are not that. We nothing about us as a band. The Crushers are dead, deadpan. Uh, we're pretty, um, I guess, overzealous and sparkly, for lack of a better word. So we did a sparkly <laughs> version of Iggy Pop's "Less for Life," which was not a, a well-advised thing to do. But um, as newcomers to the Detroit scene, we thought, why don't we just like start a fight immediately and get kicked out of Detroit? And it's just kidding. Everyone was cool about it. But um, <laughs> yeah, I was say, come on, please. They're, yeah. they're more open-minded than that. Oh, totally, totally. But, uh, well, um, I... I <laughs> um, no Detroit you know, under the bus. What? You know, like, we're a California band, and, and like, we we never feel more California than when you go somewhere else, and especially the East Coast and Detroit, which I realize is actually kind of the Midwest, kind of the East Coast, and there were so many faux pas I made, even about geography and Coney Dogs, and I won't even get into that. Coney Dogs versus Chili Dogs. But, um, yeah, like, you... We're playing with the fact that we are this like fun California band and we're living in this gritty um, city. And of course, Iggy Pop is an icon. I saw him not too long ago, a couple years ago, Burger Boogaloo. And he, I, I just want to be on whatever he's on. I want to be on that. <laughs> we all need a little bit of Iggy Pop. I mean, he's got more vitality in one little pinky than we all probably do. Or me, anyways. I don't know about you guys. You guys seem like you work out. <laughs> no, this is the best we got right now. This no, is my vi- my vitality just gets yeah, stopped. So yeah. I don't think I really explained the song very much, but you know what I mean. It's a cover. I get where you're coming from. We had yeah. fun with it. And what, yeah. Was it fun to make? Did you make a music video? And how did that go? We didn't, but like we toyed with the idea of doing a music video like the, uh, the Iggy Pop music video, which was recorded later um, in the 80s or 90s. Now mm-hmm. I don't know. But um, because it was recorded, I don't know. I actually don't know when it was recorded, but it's very stark. Like, I think it's just black and white or it's just Iggy dancing like like shirtless. And we were like, oh, wait, we can't really do that. But we (laughs) we thought we thought about it for a minute. Um, We took a kind of a break from our videos. We do a lot of videos, but moving cross country, recording a new album, all that stuff. uh, It just yeah, we don't have a lot of time for videos these days. So. We're just trying to knock out songs when we can, and well, yeah. But you could also just like just take live concert footage, slap it all together, make it black and white, boom, throw it out there. Music totally. video. Yeah, I think I think, yeah. Every any band that's not utilizing just the amount of video that's out there, good, bad, and ugly, like <laughs> just just use it. No one cares. It's only up for a day. <laughs> just I really I think that's really important, and it's like a secret to just success i suppose right right so wait so, so you mentioned that you had to take a break from the videos because you had all the stuff going on and, yeah. and you moved so and you're a california band like where did you move are did you all move to the same place well we are so my husband dr kane esquire um fake, Whoa, doctor, fake doctor fake lawyer um fake doctor fake lawyer <laughs> well, i love the esquire real <laughs> esquire <laughs> At the shows, we always ask the audience, like, what do you think he's a doctor of? And we get the funniest answers, like, podiatry and... <laughs> podiatry! Yeah, it's, it's great. <laughs> like, he he's, like, the grumpiest goat, but he's, like, the, the most mischievous man alive. Anyways, um, 
I totally <laughs> forgot the question. Oh, we moved to Detroit. Yeah. So I think COVID did a number on everybody. I don't have to say that. And we just felt like we were ready for a new adventure. We had toured out that way. And we really liked the, the people, the music scene, the food, the price of real estate. All of it was like, this is a cool place. Great community can do spirit. It kind of reminded um, Dr. Kane of like Oakland in the 90s a little bit. And just this idea, it's kind of all a melting pot of cultures coming together and, you know, bootstrapping and et cetera, et cetera. And so, yeah. we. How many house there. flippers did you meet when you were in Detroit? <laughs> um, it's, it's funny because in Detroit, the question isn't like, like, do you own a house? It's how many houses? Because, yeah, they're like, they are still so cheap comparatively to the West Coast. So, yeah, quite a few. But also just like hardworking families that are, and immigrants that are like, I bought two houses and I'm renting one out and like finding ways to like survive in a place where you can actually act, thrive, I guess, because, you know, the cost of living is so cheap that we met so many people that were like older people like us that didn't have kids that were making music or art because they were able to because financially it made sense. So like that was attractive. But to answer your question, we have like guys on um, different areas. So I like to say we have drummers in different area codes and so we got like our West Coast band. We have a band out in the Midwest and we're just really lucky that like we have such kind, talented people that want to join this crazy party. So we just kind of work with who we can and we try to pick like the best, the best of the local that we can get. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Far out. It's like a business band. That's cool. You know? <laughs> They're business fans. Um, but, but you know what I mean? Like when you go play a date, like you get to keep all the money and take it home. You know, you don't have to split it. Well, I guess you do if you well, like we hire. Do. Actually, because, you know, we, we rarely, yeah, it's all going to our guys. And, you know, yeah. they're more than hired guns to us. Like these are people we have relationships with. We consider them, you know, we've had like 12 drummers in our in the span of this band. And I think anyone who's been in a band a long time knows, like, it's just so hard to keep it all together. And the only way we've done it is by marrying each other, like the co <laughs> like the co-writers. And when people ask me, like, how do you do so much or get stuff done? I'm just like, marry your bandmate. And polygamy. That's how that's how you make bands work. Polygamy. You just all get married all together. There's another way. You can all I mean this is there's another way, but I advise against it. You can all do something illegal together. That's also a way to keep oh, a good yeah. bond, bond together. That bonds you real you know what I mean? tight. Like that that's what so me and me and Joe, it's like the only way we can't get married. well, I guess Don't we could talk get married. About it. Stop. But <laughs> Every time man. we a could secret. nothing happened. I Nothing know what you did, I know what you did last summer vibes like something mm -hmm. like someone something bad happened and we're all in it together. I love that. I'm stealing that. It's mine now. I'm going to use it all the time. But I had a song know. about it. Moving right? on to a different subject because Barry's going to get us arrested. It's very <laughs> Scooby Doo and I get a lot of like I get a lot of like you look just like that girl from Scooby Doo and I'm like which one? Velma or Daphne because I identify as both. <laughs> Oh yeah, that actually is true. Yeah. I can I see that. both. Yeah, yeah, because I lose my glasses every day. Wow, that is interesting. Did you, yeah, they, yeah, you got to keep the glasses on. That. I do. <laughs> Poolside glitter punks is how we talk about your band there. Poolside glitter punk. I think that makes sense. Being a Cal, you know, if you're not in California, that kind of puts you there. In sure. The, you we know. like to say it's like all the junk that fall. Like if you had a really good pool party, like all the junk you'd scrape from the bottom of the pool. So like <laughs> maybe there's some bubble gum, maybe there's like some cool pins and some cigarette butts and what a visual. You know. Yeah, That's like great. we we never set out to you know like be writing you know saving the world. We're just out here trying to have a good time and I don't know bring that no, to everybody no, no. but it's great because it doesn't it actually doesn't lock you into a specific genre because it's like if you're a punk band it's like oh everyone just expects you to play punk you know but you guys you can like oh you can throw out like a a bubblegum pop song or you can just go to rockabilly if you want to throw on some punk in the in the yeah. background you know it's like whatever you feel like that day kind of like it, it, it allows you to be i feel more creative instead of like slamming you into a box totally yeah we both were in a punk band before and like we both were in different country bands i was like in a string band and like we love all kinds of music from exotica to jazz you know like we <laughs> like a lot of stuff so it's just don't quiz me about jazz though because my head will explode <laughs> and i'm i like to say i'm not like that adult yet like you must be this tall to ride the jazz ride i'm like not there yet but yeah. i'm like ooh, i'm getting into like coltrane and stuff and like my husband's it's starting like, watch out it's happening all to you already. You're going to start figuring out black and white yeah. keys. I'm getting old and like, 
it's just it's wonderful. I'm suddenly You're gonna get a phonograph that. for your for your birthday. Yeah. I just yeah, there's you paint with all the colors of the rainbow. That's that's my motto. And just so, enjoy life. Okay. When you're when you are discovering this new music and you're discovering this jazz, how are you doing it? Are you going into record shops? Are you like flipping through vinyl trying to find some like weird score or something? I or wish. are you like yeah. going through Spotify? That's such a beautiful notion and like I think we all did that back in the day. I did. Uh, I've not done that in so long. Like, thanks I for know. reminding me. Shout out <laughs> to Boo Boo Records and Slow. We love Boo Boo's in San Luis Obispo, California. And I should do that because no, I'm always on Spotify or whatever. It's all streaming. And I try not to like think about it too hard and just be happy that we live in a time when all this music is available to us 24 seven, even though it's like kind of evil. Um, so no. <laughs> evil corporations. <laughs> I don't know. I just figured you'd be like the youths who had like the vinyl players and you know, you like oh, the got, needle going on. And stuff we like got that. a lot of vinyl like this. I'm in like the comic book lair. That's all comic books and vinyl. <laughs> we like couldn't bring to Detroit. Like we had to, we had to choose like a hundred records to bring to Detroit. And then we were there for a year and then we didn't even buy a record player. And it was like this whole, like, Aww, boo. it just like made us crazy. Um, but I think, for me, like, like, like the last few years, I've been less into getting vinyl and more into like just vintage stores and thrift stores and buying oh, okay. unnecessary lamps, unnecessary home goods. I'm really into ashtrays right now. I don't smoke. Um, <laughs> you don't smoke when you're into ashtrays. No, it only um, takes one. You saw, walk by one and you went, oh, that's really cool looking. And then mm -hmm. now you've got 12. You know awesome. what I'm talking about. I mean, they could be used for so many different things. You could like put some dip in there. Like you could go, you could go any direction with that it. That one's for the quarters. That's right. That's right. But what about what about uh, vintage lamps? Do you do you collect those? Do you because I I love lighting and like ambient lighting and stuff like that. Do you, do you have any like yes. old Tiffany lamps? Yeah, that's stuff? what like she original? said. She's been going there picking up all the yeah, old dusty like, lamps. Right now, I'm sandwiched between two handsome guys. But um, my grandmother's lamp from the '30s, which is like purple and has like little dangly chandelier things, and oh, nice. a pair of. 60s bubble lamps that are like bright orange and the lampshade oh. is broken. So oh, I freaking love those. They're so hard to find. Like uh, if, to find them unbroken and they're so yeah. hard to find. Oh man. And, you know, it's really cool about Detroit. Not that like this is so surprising, but like you can just drive around and find like everything in our house right now in Detroit is stuff we found on the street, like straight up. It was wow, like so amazing. And I tell people back in California and they're just like, they can't quite get it in their head because, you know, in California, you're playing such a premium for everything. But Facebook Marketplace Detroit is heaven. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Just That's go awesome. on there. Even if you're not there, just go on there and just be just bask in the glow because there's so many good lamps. You would be so obsessed. Yeah. <laughs> well, Joe, jo, listen, Haley and the Crushers are performing. The, check this. This first week of December is amazing and probably very busy. Yeah. Um, L.A. December 1st at the Regent. Oh, no, at, Red I'm, at Redwood the, Bar. At Redwood Bar? Okay. Ooh. The next day in Anaheim at House of Blues. The day a no, on the 3rd, the day wait, after that. Wait, she's, she's thinking she's of Josie. <laughs> I, think you, I think you're thinking of my girl Josie. Are you not no. touring with her? Oh, you're no. not touring? I thought you were touring no. with her. You're not touring no. with her? No. Oh. No, we're not. I would love to. I love Josie. Oh, I mean, that's she's hilarious. Like, I thought you girl. guys... Because I was going to ask you, like, what is it on? Because we had her on, and she was talking about, like, wanting to go to North Korea and stuff. And I was <laughs> like, I wonder what it's like, like, on tour with Josie. So this you're not, like, you're you're doing your solo thing. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. Like, the dates all kind of came together at different times. Like, I booked this way in advance. So, because uh -huh. we didn't know when we were going to be in the, on the West Coast. So, anyways, go see Josie Cotton. She is playing the first week and we're sad that we're going to miss each other's shows, but December 1st will be Redwood Bar LA, December okay. 2nd at Vine and Long Beach and December 16th at the Siren in Morro Bay. But yeah, oh, like Oh, cool. Hey, hi Morro Bay. Hi Rock. Yeah, yeah, so just a handful smattering of gigs. We'll have some more coming up, but go see Josie if you haven't seen Josie yet, guys. Uh, oh, stop like though. Go see Haley and the Crushers. Are you flying? Are you flying out? Are you driving out? Are you taking a train? How are you getting here? We drove, um, we drove in the van cross country, and uh, it's a wild and stinky experience. I'll be honest. There are no showers. <laughs> there are no showers. I mean, Haley, are dogs. you gonna stay there in in Detroit? Are you liking it? I mean, because you went there yeah. in COVID land. Are you like? It takes people about two years to settle into a new city. Yeah, That's we like, 
like right after COVID and like um, actually like 2022. So like, yeah, actually not that long ago, but um, yeah, I mean, we like it. We like the music scene, we like the food, we like the people, um, but we're, we're kind of in this place where I don't know if you guys can relate because I don't know about your family lives, but we don't have kids. We have two Chihuahua rat dogs and we have a yep. band. We got a I'm, van. I'm a cat dog or a we're, cat dad, sorry. Cat, cat dog. dad. I yes, cat dads. Cat yeah, dads cat everywhere. Dad. Big demographic for us. Cat dads. <laughs> like we were just like, let's just do something a little bit weird and outrageous. And you know, we don't have to figure it out too much. You know, we're 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 really really wanting to do a big Midwest tour again because we haven't done one in a while um, next year. So we'll definitely be out there because the D Detroit's a wonderful place to springboard to different cities. I mean, you can really oh, yeah. never play the East coast. And so we're playing the East coast next, next summer. So oh, it's, cool. Yeah. You, like already got, you already got dates lined up for like New York and, and Boston and stuff. Or where are you going? Fear city fun fest in New York. Um, nice. at TBI. So that's happening and then we're booking some stuff around it. So it's all kind of in the air, but, um, I don't know. It just, we we we'll, we'll we'll see where we end up. <laughs> we'll we'll right. keep music. We'll keep you know doing silly videos, and we'll keep you know hopefully being married. But um, <laughs> you know, we'll do all those hey, things. you're going on you're going on tour. You never know what's going to happen. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, oh wait, are you are you saying? Uh, I don't know. I'm just assuming. Do you make enough from touring and music alone to to survive? Like, what do you? What else are you guys doing? I love that you asked that. People should ask that more. Absolutely not. I, not at all. Um, I'm a freelance writer. So I've been a freelance writer for like over 10 years now. And I oh, cool. into marketing. Um, so I do a lot of copywriting. I work with businesses I really like. Usually it's like food, travel, tourism, California stuff which is great because I'm writing about like surfing, but I'm like in Detroit, which is so funny. Um, <laughs> I, it's not lost on me. That's really silly. But um, yeah, like that's what I do. And then Dr. Kane is a builder. He had a comic book store for 10 years and slow. He sold that so we could tour more. Um, but he's a, a builder by trade. He's been he can, anything in a house he can do. He's magical. His dad like built their family home in the 70s, like just one of those kind of salt of the earth carpenter. Oh, kind okay. of so, 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 so he's He's literally tackling a, a plumbing issue at a pizza place oh. right now. Shout oh, out well, to that's, Denny's Pizza. Hey, yeah, that's convenient so, to have if something breaks down at your house. Yeah. Um, yeah. So who's the best superhero then? <laughs> oh, that's oh, definitely <laughs> Are you involved in your husband's like comic book stuff or you, do you avoid it? I hope this makes him cringe so hard because I'm like that girl that I'm in the like indie section. Like I'm reading the, the like weirdest books, the weird comics. I'm reading like even like the, the youth comics, like the younger, I don't know, what is it called? Young adult, um, anything, anything weird and wacky. And he likes everything, but um, I love Swamp Thing. I think Swamp Thing is underrated. Okay. I think Swamp Thing is kind of, like, I think he's kind of hot. Like, I don't know why, but I'm attracted to Swamp Thing. <laughs> Hey, because he's a romantic at heart. That's why. Yeah, and it's because like, you're it's because you're you're attracted to his inside because you can see how pure he is. This is all making I a know. lot of sense now with my marriage. No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> no, like Swamp Thing is hot. Like he is a hot. Like I guess Josie talked about North Korea, so I can talk about this. Yeah, um, yeah. Like I love Swamp Thing. I'm trying to think of who else I love. I'm superhero. I mean, Swamp Thing's not a superhero. He's like a psychedelic weird anti-hero dude so that that answers your question hey, I know that, 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 you, that you know what we're talking about it's all, the, it's no all the same. chris ware the cartoonist is my favorite um superhero or daniel klaus i love those two um uh cartoonists oh yeah uh, yeah they're Sorry. actual artists yeah yeah i'm i'm a nerd i don't, I don't really <laughs> You're a nerd. all the cool kids are into superheroes now like i don't i don't know what's going on <laughs> no, I, neither do we, man. We're trying to all figure it out. Um, <laughs> Understand. Yeah. So you have some other songs out, don't you? Tell us about like some of the fun ones that you you've made so in the past. I got some fun songs always. That's an understatement. Um, <laughs> oh man, um, our album Modern Adult Kicks is pretty fun. Um, it, we like to joke though that it's like our most grown up album because it does talk about like addiction and like loss and yet people will like review it or talk about it and be like it was a blast of sugar sugary fun um so even when i feel like i'm being like on our song click and act now it's basically about 
you know, everybody in the world is trying to get you to buy something and you're, this is a common punk rock theme, but you know, now it's just like so much more in your hand. It's in your face all the time. And at the end of the commercial, we basically copied, we verbatim copied an infomercial for Tupperware. So at the end of the video, we listen for it. And uh, Dr. Kane talks about like buying Tupperware and buy, act now, buy two and get one free or something. So that's a fun one, click and act now. But Modern Alt Kicks is like our latest thing. I love it, it's my baby. It's, I think it's grown up, but it's also really fun. It's about being an adult and becoming an adult in your mid thirties, the vintage millennial growing up and still being able to dance through all the hard things that happen in life and still finding those glimmers of hope and beauty in life. And so that is like my favorite album that we've done. So. I need to suck some of that positivity out of you right yeah. now. <laughs> oh, I need some of that. I, oh, I just got to take that. It. Suck some of my sarcasm out too, because it's like <laughs> sometimes I hear myself and I'm like, oh no, like no, give it, give that to Barry. I already have too much. I'm like overflowing over here, so I can't Barry needs some of the sarcasm. My mom is my mom would be proud. She's very sarcastic. She's a really funny, sarcastic woman, and I think I just got it from her. So. Does your mom uh, appreciate what you're doing, or is she just yeah. like, oh, my daughter just does music. She does her thing. What I, have, you haven't included your mom as like on an intro mom. to one of your songs on one on your album? I mean, come on, she could do that. She should. She, I, I'm like, it would be great if it was just like. <laughs> or something crazy like that that would be fine i love that i would love to get her screaming um no i mean exactly like, we call her mom crusher you know the thing about my mom that's so funny is like she she came up she she was like in her early 20s in new york in the 70s during cbgb oh, gritty, literally saw, oh, gritty times yeah literally saw um joey ramone tells me all the time of course to make me feel bad of course um it's like son at the movie theater and like oh <laughs> Debbie harry and me but she was never oh, really Debbie Harry. I mean, God, she's still talk uh, about celebrity crush. Swamp I know, Man. right? Too. Um, yeah, but like she never got into punk. So she loves that I'm an artist and I'm expressing myself. But I mean, I don't think she's like the biggest punk rock fan in the world. But um, I know she supports us and she's mom crusher. So uh -huh. what can I say about that? I mean, it feels good to. I think it feels good to express yourself, whether or not your family or friends or literally anyone in your life understands it. That's not what it's about. It's about the initial expression. And it's good to remind yourself that so that you're not looking for that validation. So yeah. does, I'm, she, I'm uh, does she know who uh, Iggy Pop is? Did she oh, heard that song? 100%. She loved it. She loved Dr. Kane's vocals, her son-in-law growling. And of course, yeah, I mean, 70s, yeah, icon. Have you seen her or her friends in the pit? Yeah. <laughs> no, no, I have not. I, I think this should be a music video, though. I think there should be like a mom. Oh, this is a good one. So Dr. Kane's mom, who's a little bit older, she's like in her seventies. She went as a punk rocker for Halloween one year, like in I don't even know, maybe the eighties or nineties, because her son was a punk rocker. And so there's this great picture of her in like this in his amazing just like gross like like um vest with like all the patches and it's just like you know ftw and like blats and like just really like crust punky like and i just think it's the cutest thing and now i'm i'm thinking maybe that should be a music video we should get moms on board moms should be more on board i'm down for that i like yeah. generational punk rock myself yeah yeah don't be a bitter old jerk poop face <laughs> you almost did. yeah but no you you should totally um uh i am waiting for the inaugural meeting of moms for punk rock that will be held in los angeles when you come here for uh your show yeah. that will be great yeah totally yeah la the first long beach the second moral bay the 16th and you're on Instagram. You're you're a social media person, so you're not that old. You're a star. Yeah, I'm a millennial, so I, I'm a vintage millennial. I'm in my mid thirties, mid to late thirties. Who's counting? So, so you I'm don't a, hate the internet <laughs> like we do. <laughs> I mean, I remember in like the late nineties having a blog that I don't even know how I figured out how to do it, but I was like in my walk-in closet with like little Christmas lights, like connecting with weirdos on the internet. I remember the internet being cool. I remember the internet being so magical and i yeah. want that back you guys yeah. I, they broke it the genie's out of the bottle yeah 
I'm never going to be one of those people that's like the internet's terrible. And, you know, it's not for everybody. I think it can be a little bit scary when you are basing, again, going back to external validation, it can be scary. You're looking for likes and stuff, but use my tip, post something embarrassing, close your phone, put it away and don't look at it for two days. Cause you won't even remember anymore what you posted. That's uh, I mean, I, I guess my thing is, I just think there's too much. There's too much. It's just, it's just bombards you with content. There's you can't take it all in. And yeah. we got to get away from doing things for likes and doing right. things for external validation and all the stuff. And sure. Like we want people to come and see us and you know, we want sponsors and you want to sell tickets and stuff like that. But it's like the end all be all of life has been like, how many likes did you get on your post? And I, I, I don't want that anymore. And this is what I do for a living. And I, I just, I am so just yeah. tired of the like chasing. I just don't yeah. want to do it anymore. Like chasing. That's good. I recently wrote a song about that, that we recorded in Josie Cotton's, Josie Cotton's studio name drop. And um, with Paul Rossler name drop. Legendary <laughs> screamers name drop. But um, <laughs> no, I wrote a song about exactly like everything you're saying. I, it hits me in the heart. I feel it. And I think maybe this is, you know, every generation has different crosses to bear and different blessings, not to be like very religious in how I'm talking about this, but we get, we get both sides and every generation has to deal with stuff. And it's just, I feel like we're kind of on this precipice of like, how do we want to be online and like, what's okay. And like, do we want our kids and our, you know, our teenagers to be quantifying them, their bodies and their minds and everything this way, just like you said. Right. So. I don't know. I think it's really interesting subject matter. And, you know, until we figure it out, I just, I, I, I would encourage people to just try to have fun with it. And like I said, if you feel embarrassed or vulnerable, just turn off your phone for like a day. You will not remember right. You're eating a sandwich right. thinking, Oh, it's a good sandwich. You're not going to even think about it anymore. Exactly. Just, exactly. exactly. Just, even if it's not a good sandwich, you will yeah. forget. <laughs> totally. Mm -hmm. oh, no, like, then you'll actually remember it more because it'd be negative and the negative stuff sticks in your head more. So right. it just happens. I'm yeah. just hoping we get back to being more present. Everything's been like recorded and stuff like that. And it's like more live shows, more live stuff, more live broadcasts on radio and on videos and stuff like that. <laughs> Not eh, more in the present. Do you guys feel, how do you like, I just, how do you guys feel about live shows? Do you feel like they're coming back full front for full force? Or do you feel like, cause I feel like it's still being kind of hard, you know? Um, uh -oh. I, I think Sorry. it's, it, I think it's still hard. Yes. I think it is coming back, but, um, it's, it's more about are the people that like to go to shows are, are they aging out and are the younger generation yeah still interested in seeing live music and it's not something that i think has been researched or studied or looked at um yes. sure the taylor swifts and the beyonce's of the world yes. they're selling tickets like mad but what about the Haley and the crushers of the universe and yeah. you know what about the devin thompson's who you know a, a singer songwriter here like what about those people the ava kings are those people getting right younger people to attend their shows are are we seeing those that? are people that yeah. we recently interviewed Haley, and that's why he's oh. bringing those uh, up. Uh, yeah. have this conversation name a lot drop. Yeah, name <laughs> drop. Point. and i think also with young people we see that they're going to bars less they're, they see social interactions to be a little bit less in person and yeah we'll see what happens maybe there'll be like a pendulum swing and we'll all get i i even feel weird being in at live shows still like just it something happened with COVID. like uh, yeah, we're not out of it yet. I don't think yeah. we're out of it yet. But so, nothing's. I think nothing's going to change. You know, it, everything is uh, always as it ever was. You know, what does yeah. the Talking Heads guy say? Same <laughs> as it ever was. Same as it ever uh, was. But it is still weird. But we're going to come out and see you for all these shows, man. And yeah. I, really? I hope we. Ha I hope we have you on again too, because anytime you have news, we'd love to have you on, oh. Patty or Velma. Looking, <laughs> it would be fine by us. <laughs> I'll bring my Scooby snacks next time. And Woohoo! Okay. Uh, before we leave here, um, we're going to play that Lust for Life song next. But tell us your favorite part about Morro Bay and the surrounding areas. And it can't be El Montano de Oro because that's my favorite thing. <laughs> I mean, that's Everyone's such a basic answer. How could I answer so basically? 
Well, I don't know if y'all remember Seal Jail, but there was this aquarium that was- <laughs> Seal a, Jail? We called it Seal Jail in school because we were very sad about it and the way that the, the seals were treated. But um, I actually have a music video called Blue and Green where my friend Danielle dresses up as a mermaid that we washed on shore. And she has a beard. And we got a lot of we got a lot of hate because she's a bearded mermaid. Mermaid. Anyways, um, the whole video features um, Morro Bay, and one of my favorite spots in Morro Bay is the Shell Shop, which is the kitschiest little 1950s shop with these yep. amazing shell creations <laughs> that would never look good in anyone's home, but and yet they <laughs> yeah. still seem to be making them. And it makes me so happy because you could see like a little chandelier thing. You could see almost like a toilet seat cover or like a light switch cover. <laughs> like there's even the shells with the stupid faces on them. And like, I don't know. I love my that. My shell wall display from there is fine. It looks great oh, in my display over one. here. Come on. He's the one that's buying all that Jeez, stuff. This I love here. kitschy stuff like that, man. And it looks fantastic. Please go to the shell shop. Buy all the shells. Oh, that's so madness. cute. You guys. Yeah, it's madness over there. But <laughs> I, I, I do love, I love Mora Bay. I love the vibe. I love, um, I, I don't know. I love the otters, you know, seeing otters out there just kind of cracking their little lunch shells on, again, shells. On I like yes. when they, I like how they hold hands to like stay together. Yeah. That, that's really cute. Yeah. I mean, and there's actually some great otter cams, you guys. I don't know if you all get on there, but when I'm away from the coast, I do actually frequent the otter cams. There's otter cam in, <laughs> all down the coast. So just Google otter cam and you will see otters just in their full regalia, just on their backs, twirling, kissing each other, holding hands. It's like it's like soft core otter. So, so, so core otter porn. <laughs> so your, your 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 internet tabs are Detroit Facebook Marketplace and the otter cam. I understand completely. <laughs> just flipping back and forth. I think you really just hit the nail on the head and explains a lot. <laughs> So I'm not rocketed to stardom yet, but I do have a small niche of people that like the same stuff, and I feel like they'll be so happy they heard about the otter cam. Yeah. <laughs> well, I hope we're boy. we're part of your circle now that likes the same stuff, because, yeah, yeah, we do too. Hell yeah. Definitely. You guys are great. Thanks for having me. Well, Haley, we'll see you on stage. First week of December, you can get to the Instagram. You can get to the link tree from her Instagram, Haley and the Crushers. Let's play Lust for Life. Thanks, Haley, for coming on tonight. <laughs> Thanks, guys. It was great. Bye.